Hi friends, welcome to Mega Technical Hub. In the last session, we studied about the acceptable limit of vibration for any rotating equipment. We discussed about ISO standard 10816, which is mainly used for the measuring of vibration velocity in mm per second on non-rotating parts. And it has six parts, mainly one to six. And part one and part three are mostly used in industry if you want to understand clearly about iso 10816 you can refer my previous video apart from that 10816 there are some other standards also being used by industry for example iso 7919 it is a vibration standard mainly used for the evaluation of machine vibration by measurements done on rotating shafts in case of 10816 it was non rotating parts but here it is on rotating shafts it is mainly used for the general bearings of turbo machinery or generators here we generally use non contact transducer may be eddy current probes and they are mounted at 90 degree apart and the measuring unit is displacement that is in micron and also peak to peak from the electrical side that is IEC that is International Electrotechnical Commission 60034 this standard being used for all rotating electrical machines for the original equipment manufacture of any motors they prefer this standard 60034 for the acceptance test of their motors at factory site also this standards can be used for the motor solo run and also motor no load and apart this standards one of the standard being used for the balancing that is iso 1940 i will today i will discuss about more about this balancing standard iso 1940 this standard is mostly used for the all industries and this standard tells about tells us about how much residual unbalance can be kept to run the machine with lowest vibration so before going to detailed about the balancing we just undergo what is the concept of balancing first what is unbalance unbalance is nothing but it is a uneven distribution of mass if you consider a impeller plane these two are the dust deposition over the impeller and these two are the porosity that is the metal loss from the impeller both the to contribute for the uneven distribution of mass due to this uneven distribution of mass it creates the centrifugal force for example here in the right side there is a mass over the impeller blade due to this uneven this uh, unbalanced mass it creates a centrifugal force this centrifugal force pulls the rotor to rotate its off center okay then what happens because of this plumber block bolts are there and bearing is there it ever it restricts the movement of this rotor to go for the hop center then the undue stresses are developed in the bearing and plumber block so it reduces the life of the bearings also it impacts the reliability of the equipment so balancing of rotating body is very much important to avoid the vibration and catastrophic failures what is balancing balancing is the process to improve the mass distribution of body so that it rotates in its bearings without the unbalanced centrifugal forces this slides clearly explain what happens when rotating impeller has some unbalance first picture describes the equipment in balanced condition before that we need to understand the two terms that is center of geometry and what is center of mass center of geometry is the line through the shaft and bearings geometrical axis and second is center of mass center of mass is the point about which mass is evenly distributed that is center of gravity when the rotor or any equipment is balanced properly then center of gravity and center of mass they coincides each other there is no offset between the center of gravity geometry and center of mass 
if the equipment unbalanced because of some uneven distribution of mass then it creates the centrifugal force because of centrifugal force this tries to pull the impeller off set to rotate off center and that what happens this center of mass separates from the center of geometry there is a offset between the two so center of point is the point about which mass is evenly distributed this red circle it clearly indicates the center of mass and this at the bottom this line it clearly indicates the center of geometry okay this center of geometry and center of mass there is a offset because of this offset there is it gives undue forces on the bearing and plumber block so generally we call it as eccentricity there is a eccentricity because of unbalance that i will explain in the later slides what is eccentricity for any industries the main balancing standard used is iso 1940 for balancing of fans rotors pumps or any rotating equipment is iso 1940 it this standards has mainly nine balancing grades that is applicable for various applications these grades are generally starts from g.4 g1 g2.5 g6.3 g16 g40 g100 g250 g630 these 2.5 6.3 they all balancing grades these Point four is the most precision grade, and it mainly applies for the rotors of gyroscopes, spindles, armatures, precision grinders, among others. And the most lenient grade is G six thirty, and is applicable for the crankshaft of large and rigidly mounted diesel engines. In industries, the most commonly used grades are G two point five and six point three, but in the recent days. that g2.5 is mainly used for the turbo machinery rotors and also in general fan application pumps motors and general industries so 6 g2.5 is most preferable in recent days so some persons they are misguided and they assumed that these grades like 2.5 6.3 16 these represents like mm per second in velocity amplitude but it is wrong mainly the balance grade g it is a combination it is a product of eccentricity e and angular velocity of rotor eccentricity is measured in mmr micron that is uh, the offset between the center of mass and center of geometry that i explained in the earlier slide w is the angular velocity of rotor in radians per second consider the this impeller having the speed angular velocity is w dc is the geometric center line center point and this cd cg is center of gravity suppose for example there is a unbalanced force is there then it creates the offset between the center of mass and center of geometry that is eccentricity that measured in micron or in mm and w is the angular velocity <coughs> what is residual unbalance it is any kind that remains after balancing by the weight addition means if your fan is having some unbalance then you are putting first trial weight and based on the phase we will put the correction weight okay then there will be some unbalanced left after complete balancing that is called as residual unbalance okay but we are all human beings it is very difficult to have perfect balancing machine means to have a zero unbalance so some residual unbalance is left always after balancing so this 1940 it tells us about what should be the permissible unbalance for any rotating equipment based on the grades i explained in the earlier slide 
द फॉर्मुला यूज फॉर द रेसिड्यूल अनबैलेंस एज पर द स्टैंडर्ड वन नाइन फोर जीरो इज जस्ट यू रिमेंबर दिस वन नाइन फाइव फोर नाइन मल्टीप्लाइड बाई दिस ग्रेड मल्टीप्लाइड विद दिस रोटर वेट एंड डिवाइड बाय एन दट इज आर पी एम यू पी आर मीन्स एक्सेप्टेबल रेसिड्यूल अनबैलेंस लेफ्ट आफ्टर फाइनल बैलेंसिंग This is the formula for to uh, to uh, calculate the residue unbalance for different grade quality grades. Suppose the fan is simply supported, there are two bearings are there D E and N D E. Then this total accepted residue unbalance is contributed between the these two bearings. Then U left and U right is equal to U permissible divided by so i will explain by using one of the example so that you can clearly understand what is the residual unbalance okay this is remember this formula for example suppose the weight of the rotor is 5000 kg and rpm of the machine is 1500 and the diameter of impeller is 2500 and the diameter of correction weight 2300 means from the center you are putting the correction weight at a distance of 2300 mm that is radius okay then you permissible you put all these values in this equation 9549 and g first you refer g is g 2.5 grade you are using for this fan application put here 2.5 then W is the rotor weight, thousand five hundred is the RPM. Then a permissible acceptable limit is seventy nine thousand five seventy five grams mm is the unbalance per mm. But you are putting the unbalance that is correction weight at a distance of two thousand three hundred mm. So you need to divide this U permissible by this R. Then you get thirty four point five grams. is a total residue unbalance of the rotor but there are two bearings are there in case of simply supported then the, both the bearings contribute for the contributed for this unbalance mass then you can calculate as u permissible left is equal to u permissible right that is 17.2 grams so as for 1940 as grade 2.5 for the rpm 1500 allowable residue unbalance can be left after final balancing is only 17.2 grams in each bearings then the equipment is balanced as per standard 2.5 suppose the uh, fan supplier they did the balancing by means of using 6.3 grade suppose you consider then just to calculate what will be the residue unbalance For example, here the rotor weight is same, RPM is same, impeller same, and the uh, radius where you putting the unbalanced correction mass is same. Then you put instead of two point five, you put here six point three grade because the OEM is doing the unbalance, sorry, balancing by himself this grade. Then permissible it comes around two lakh five twenty nine gram per mm gram mm. So you need to divide by this radius two thousand three hundred. Then you get a permissible acceptable unbalanced limit that is eighty seven point one nine one eight grams. But both the bearings they contribute for this uh, unbalanced force divided by two. You get forty three point five nine grams. So as for ISO one nine four zero, if you use grade six point three, then residual unbalanced. left after final balancing is 43.59 grams so if you go for the lower grade again oem has done by the applying the balancing grade d1 so in place of this formula you put here gs1 here remaining all the parameters are same the weight impeller diameter rpm are same then you get 31830 gram mm then you need to divide by this one 2300 then 13.83 grams 
but the per bearing that is 6.9 grams means as per the standard if you use the grade 1 then 6.9 grams is the allowable residual unbalance left after balancing so i have put all these grades and what are the uh, what are the residual unbalance you are getting after balancing first one is g6.3 we have unbalance is 43.59 grams if you use g2.5 then unbalance is 17.2 grams if you use again the precision grade this is g1 then you have unbalance mass as 6.9 grams when you go for the lower uh, quality grades g then you will have precision balancing means g1 has more precision balancing compared to g 6.3 so you need to insist for any oem for the fan manufacturer so they should balance the fan minimum g 2.5 if it is g1 then it would be very excellent it would be better for your reliability of the fan but it will be very difficult to make at uh, factory site by this uh, unbalanced mass 6.1 only keeping 6.9 grams so prefer this 2.5 grade for any balancing standard as per 1940 i hope you understand the concept of unbalanced quality grades and what should be the residual unbalance can be kept to run the machine with lower vibration so i hope you understand all these things clearly i hope you referred my earlier videos also so that it would be easy for you to understand the next coming sessions to have more fundamental concepts thank you